So I'm Dennis Brown. I'm here today to talk about uh, zombies and how hackers kill them. Unfortunately, this isn't the kind of zombies that you kill with shotguns, which is fun, or the ones that involve people loving Twinkies, although I do. Um, it's about, ha about the badge game we had at a conference called Callhog Con, based in Rhode Island earlier this year, where we had a zombie game on our badges for the conference, the electronic badges. Let me uh, pull one up here, like this one here. If anyone can see that, probably not. Um, and we had a lot of good fun with it. We had a lot of good data as a result. I'm here to talk about that today, how we did this, what the data we collected was, what people did with the badges once they got their hands on them, the havoc they created, and uh, all the kinds of good stuff. So let's get into it. So what is Quahog Con? If you watch Family Guy, you uh, probably have heard of the city, Quahog, Rhode Island. It isn't a real city in Rhode Island, unfortunately, but it's like every city in Rhode Island if you know the place. Um, it's also the state clam. Yeah, we're strange there. Um, but it was a new conference this year, a uh, regional one. We had a great turnout, it was a lot of fun. We focused on having a lot of infosec tracks and having a lot of maker culture stuff too. We had a wonderful uh, hardware hacking area, the tool guys came to have a lockpick village. It was a blast, it was a lot like a really, really, really small version of DEF CON in some ways, so we had a great time. And I'm Dennis Brown, I helped organize Quahog Con. I also helped run the uh, DC 401 chapter. Anyone here from DC 401? Yeah, thanks for coming. That's all of you, I think. <laughs> and uh, my day job is I am a, a security researcher at a Tenable Network Security. I do a lot of malware research, or if I talk to anybody who knows Tenable at all, I write nasals because that's all anyone thinks. So Nessus plugins, that's all. Um, <laughs> A lot more than that, but so this was kind of out of my element for something—a project to work on. I haven't done a lot of things dealing with hardware. I've never written firmware ever before, so this was a fun project to get involved with. We had a great small team of people working on these badges diligently to really make them fun and usable, and it was a great project to work on. And our goal when we started working on this was have a badge that was hackable, something that you could just sit down, have fun right away, no barrier to entry or anything. And then something we wanted to use after the con was over so you could take it home, keep hacking on it, and maybe get something useful done with it. And, and there's actually some great useful things people have done with it after the con, which is awfully nice. Um, we want to include wireless connectivity on the badges because having an LED flash or something that is kind of passive is fun, but we wanted to have a little more interactivity with the badges uh, because that's just cool, right? Um, so we wanted to also put a game in there too because it's fun to have a badge that'll like like a TV be gone badge. That's fun. It's fun to cause trouble when you're in a bar with guys wanting to watch sports and you turn it off on them. But we want to have people have something active to do at the con. We can interact with everybody else there. So we uh, definitely, that was one of our main design goals when we started. We definitely wanted to have an open source development environment because it's no fun if you have to go and use proprietary tools or uh, IDE that you're not familiar with to get going on it. We uh, ended up using GCC, so that worked out really well for us. And uh, we want to make it easy to write custom firmware for. So I'd say out of the three, uh, out of the four points here, we only hit about three of them. The uh, ease of uh, development or getting people working on it at the con was a little bit of a misfire on our part. And I'll talk about that later when we uh, go over the mistakes we made. So the badge design itself was really great. It actually was done for us from the start. We worked with a company called Redwire LLC based out of Massachusetts. Uh, they had this product, they call it the Red Bee Econotag. That's the picture of it there on the projector. Um, it's a really nice device. It uses the uh, Freescale MC1322-4 um, microcontroller, which is an ARM7 microcontroller. It runs at something like 20-something uh, megahertz. I forget the exact number of megahertz, but it's a really nice chip. And the great thing about it, it has a lot of nice features. It has a nice watchdog timer to make it so you can keep it from crashing when some guy's sweaty shirt touches it and makes the whole badge freak out, which happened a few times. Um, it has an AES right on the chip, so you can have all kinds of nice encryption with it, which we totally did not use. But the feature we used it for was it had Zigbee on board us, 802.15.4. This was excellent. We, uh, this gave us pretty much everything we wanted in one package, and we started working with the Red Bee guys. They helped us expand upon it a bit to really make it what would be great for our conference. Another nice thing it had that we chose to keep was it had a USB connector on it, which made this a breeze to flash and write custom firmware for and just expand upon it however you wanted to. Uh, this worked out wonderfully for us. The picture on here is the end product we had. And if you notice, the middle of the badge is pretty much what we had with the econo tag from the previous slide. And I apologize for the uh, missing a few things on the slide there. Hopefully all the good data is there. But uh, we took the econo tag design. We changed a few things about it. Um, we ended up with the same interface they had with uh, two buttons and a reset button. The reset button is on the left. Um, we, have, we added five red LEDs on the left side, like a little bank of five, and a RGY, red, green, yellow RGBs on the right side, well, LEDs on the right side. And we made it use AA, or AAA batteries. 
which we thought was a good call because if people wanted to do something after the fact, they could just go to any pharmacy, any store and pick up some triple A's, pop them in the batch, and they're rolling once again with whatever they're doing with it. Um, ultimately, we, got, we worked with a local manufacturer, J&J Technologies, out of Foxborough, Massachusetts, which we love working with local fabricators for these. Um, we ended up with about th 30 bucks for badge, which we rolled into the cost of admission, which made this very affordable for us. The overall admission was $100, so this was right in our budget. It was great. We uh, just rolled it back to the attendees, and everybody seemed to enjoy that part of it, at least. So the badge was really easy to code for. Like I said earlier, it just uses an ARM cross-compiler. Uh, if you go to the uh, MC1322 development site run by the Redwire guys, um, they have all the tools in there to build the tool chain, get it all working just properly. Very, very easy to work with. Um, and there's a lot of fun things you can do with it even after the con when you're not playing with your follow con mates anymore. Uh, Josh Wright at Koha Con used uh, the Killer B uh, pr uh, tools he developed in order to attack other badges there and really make them freak out quite a bit, which was fun. He uh, gave him a few tips on things he should try, and he tried all of them and really made people freak out a bit at the conference. Um, there's Contiki support. Contiki is essentially a full uh, development, a uh, full system environment for the badge itself, which helps you, uh, which just abstracts away a lot of the things. It gives you IPv4 access, IPv6, using 6 low pan, a lot of other great utilities for it. It essentially is like running a full operating system on the badge in some ways. Um, there's a lot of sample code that worked really well that was distributed with the development tools for the badge, which people were using to right away write packet sniffers, uh, packet injectors with a whole lot of great tools. And just the other day, uh, Dragorn implemented Kismet support for the badge itself, which I'm going to demonstrate here, and I hope it still works. It's in the very alpha stage. But what this does is it turns the badge into a uh, Zigbee sniffer, so you could use this, or if you purchase the uh, Kano tag from the Redbee guys, go to your uh, next pen test with a con badge and try to find uh, Maybe if you're at a SCADA facility, use a ZigBee, find vulnerabilities there, walking around with your conference badge. I thought that was pretty cool. So I want to demonstrate that here to show the kind of stuff we see. Now, one thing I asked for before this conference, if anybody's on, if anybody was reading on Twitter or on the DC4 mailing list or on the Koha Con site, to bring your badges. So now would be a good time to get them out and uh, generate some traffic for me to actually see with this. Just one second, I'll set this up. So I'll apologize if it isn't too easy to see, but okay. So if you can just, let's see if you can see anything here. So I'm starting some buttons here. If not, I'll fire something else up. So this is the Kismet server we're running right now. The uh, Zigbee, uh, the what is it? The D15.4. Uh, module is a new one in Kismet SVN. It was checked in last night, so I ch ch advise checking it out if you want to see it. It's nothing happening, I'm guessing. Live demo failure, I guess. Oh well. Um, but it was in there if you have something like this or any other device that uses uh, that does Zigbee, it, that uses the serial Zigbee drivers available for the this chipset and some other ones as well. Um, I was talking with Dragarn, who unfortunately couldn't be here this year. But uh, he said that he believes it'll work with the Ninja badges as well this year because they use the same microprocessor. So hopefully we can get some good stuff with this. Is this thing just failing? Absolutely. So supposedly these things have a 600 foot line of sight rates. Oh, thank you, Larry. Let's try it out. Oh, hold on. Let me try that. Okay, so this is absolutely failing. I'm sorry, it's really, really early alpha code. But uh, if you have one, you want to check it out. Just uh, check it out of the Kismet SVN repository. It uses the plugin architecture, which is pretty new in recent versions of Kismet. So if you haven't used it, uh, it's really just other modules you compile in, add them to your source directory, add them to your home directories, Kismet directory, Kismet slash plugins, and it loads right up and works fine. Except not right now when I want it to work, of course. So let's get away from that. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> so, so like I said earlier with the firmware, we wanted to have a game for it. And we wanted it to be something that attendees could do while they're sitting in talks, while they're t chatting with people, just to kind of pass the time, have some fun with, and then, of course, attack in any way they can see fit. So uh, we came up with a bunch of multiple, we had multiple design ideas. One, the one we got working first and actually had fully implemented in the firmware was a Tamagotchi game, which would have been incredibly lame. Um, this was about four weeks before the conference, so we were very worried that this wasn't going to pan out and we were going to be stuck with an incredibly lame firmware on the badge. Fortunately, that didn't happen. 
we uh, went through a few iterations, and then uh, as we were working on the design for it, we landed on the concept of a zombie versus humans game, where some people would be humans, some people would be zombies, depending on the firmware they got when they registered for the conference. And they would have instructions on how to attack the other side, or maybe become another side, or switch over to the other side. We implemented this in about three weeks, which is a awfully short amount of time to implement something for this scale, but uh, it was hacked together really poorly. It came out to be about 4,000 lines of code total for the various firmware versions we had, and uh, the code is absolutely atrocious, but it will be available on the KohaCon website um, if you want to check it out and criticize and laugh, so that is certainly something you're welcome to do. Um, next time we do this, we'd like to have more time to implement this. I'd recommend anybody who tries to do a project like this themselves, give yourself more time than a few weeks to do it. Um, so the way the game works, like I said before, humans like to kill zombies, which is how things work in nature. Um, they had multiple attack modes, so they could do stronger attacks, but they could take more damage if a zombie hits them, or they could be more defensive and not get hit as hard, or and not hit as hard. Um, zombies would kill humans using a charge-up style attack, where they'd hold down a button and have a more powerful attack the longer they wound up for it. And the speakers and vendors, we decided to give them something special uh, in the firmware without having a different badge for it by giving them, making them a cleric or a healer um, where they would heal humans and try to convert zombies back into humans. So this was just fun because we figured the, the speakers probably were just going to do their talk and meander about, maybe not sit around too much to play with it. And the vendors are probably too busy doing other things. So we gave them pretty powerful capabilities in this, for these badges here. And then the uh, security people, we call them the muscle there, named after another type of clam or shellfish. Um, where they would be able to attack anyone, but they had the weakest attacks possible because they were supposed to be working the whole time and we didn't want them having actual fun. We wanted them to actually work, so we put them uh, very weak. So I'm going to do a live demo here with some badges. I could use five volunteers actually to come and grab one and give it a shot. Um, yeah, just, just come up, just come up. I don't care. Over here. Over here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's five. That's good. Oh, God. Wow, that's really <laughs> creepy. Thank you. <laughs> so grab one of the uh, badges here. You have a whole kit with some uh, AAA batteries. Please put the batteries in the right way. There's little marks on the inside of the battery thing. Which one's the plus? Yeah. And there's lanyards if you want to hook it up and uh, hold it somewhere. So. What a pleasing design. I know. The green circuit board design was uh, called How We Do This Very Cheaply. So. It worked out well for us in that regard. <laughs> so this is the exciting part we watch people put in batteries. <laughs> so once they have it in, it'll boot up right away and load up into a mode. Yeah, hold, hold yours up there. This would be a human badge, the one with the white, uh, the whole column of red LEDs lit there. That means they're not zombies, and they can use the bottom button to change the mode they're in, and the top button will then, depending on the setting they have it in, will send an attack packet out, and if another zombie in the area reaches or sees it, they're hurting and they're not so happy at that point. So, what do we have? What, what, can you hold your badges around to the front? Four humans, and if we all have humans, this is epic fail on my part. <laughs> <laughs> is that batteries in the wrong way? Or? These catch on fire. Yeah, they won't catch. They shouldn't catch on fire. So, to make this a little more compelling, I'm going to fire up one of our tools for this. Put this up there. So, we collected a lot of packets through the whole weekend. We had a, we had two uh, packet sniffers running in the various parts of the conference, and we captured a whole lot of data here. Probably have to reset that. So I'm going to run this here while people hit the button so you can see the actual Zigbee magic in the air. Is there magic in there? Yeah. There's magic in there. Okay, so we see on the screen here, I hope you can read it. They're coming up there. The QZ entries are all various packets going through. Um, the one denotes a human attack, two is zombie, three and four are cleric attacks, or heals, I guess they are technically. So this is what we saw all weekend long, just traffic like this flowing in and out. The rest of the columns here, after, so it's QZ just knows the type of packet it is, the type of attack, the third power is the strength of that attack, and then the rest of it is actually random data, so that's just garbage. Um, if you notice one thing here, where all the threes and fours always have a 20 after it, I'll be talking about that shortly. That was a terrible oversight on our part. But anyway, uh, so his badge is flashing in and out. That means he's a dead zombie, so you've lost. <laughs> I'm sorry, you've lost. 
but you can button mash and then come back to life. So zombies had a very nice feature in that regard. So this is fun, I have this demo, if everybody having fun seeing random text come up on the screen, I'm sure. Okay, well that's good. I think we can, we can just keep playing this whole time, have fun, kill other people. Yes, 